Alison Petland was born in Leningrad to a prominent family in the Communist Party. As she grew she herself joined the party and attended the university in Moscow. Shortly before she graduated she was approached by a family friend and recruited into the illustrious KGB. She was trained in torture, along with her training she used the skills as a biochemist and psychologist to further advance the communist cause. In 1991 she was 39 years old when the bottom was fell out of her universe. The Berlin Wall fell and her own government was on the verge of collapse. To avoid any retaliation from her countrymen she fled with a hoard of wealth she had stashed. The money and jewellery were taken from many of her hapless victims. From Moscow, she travelled to Switzerland. There she discovered that she could make an excellent living as a dominatrix. Alison was about 40 but she looked 25 at the most, she had long brown hair, blue eyes, and a figure that made most men's mouths drop to the floor once they saw her. The local John's Reel seemed to enjoy her thick Russian accent and would come back to her time after time no matter what torture she inflicted on them. She had toned herself down from her past style but torture was torture, only now it was sexual and guys came requesting it. After three years as a practicing dom, Alison felt that there was something missing in her life. She had money, an excellent home and any material possession one could ask for. After a great deal of soul-searching, she came to one conclusion. Alison wanted a child. When she was in Russia she had no problem conceiving, but each time had an abortion because having a young child and being in the KGB did not mix. The next day Alison saw a fertility specialist and after many tests, it was discovered that she was unable to carry a child. Alison was crushed. She asked if there were any doctors who could help her. Her doctor said he knew of a doctor in the US who might be able to help her. During this time the American company Merck had approached her and offered her a job as a research chemist. One week later she obtained a visa and was allowed to immigrate as a biochemist to the United States. She arrived at a Hare International Airport late Monday night. After going to her hotel she tidied herself and the next morning she was sitting in another fertility specialist office. Dr. Radin examined her and ran more tests than the Swiss doctor, but unfortunately, she received the same answer. Alison left the doctor's office very depressed. She had wanted to start her new life in this new country with a family. Now she could not, at least she still had her job. Alison started at the research lab working on antipsychotics she then branched into developing hypnotics, sleeping pills. Her boss and co-workers were quite impressed with her knowledge and strong work ethic. But Alison was used to a certain lifestyle and her job did not allow for the cash she had overseas. So one month after being in the US she was again working as a dominatrix. During the day she was a research chemist at night she became Mistress Petland. Again she was successful even here in the US the guy liked her accent and style of torture. Allison soon had a condo on the shores of Lake Michigan in one of the more affluent neighborhoods of Chicago. From her five-bedroom condo, she could run her nighttime business with no questions asked. It was there that she met Douglas. Douglas was an about twenty-ish male, very boyish in appearance. They had first met in the elevator and they had seen each other in communal areas of the complex. He seemed nice enough but every time Alison talked to him he acted as if he was hiding something. On several occasions, she had secretly noticed that before he took his laundry to the laundry room he would look out into the hall, if someone was seen he could go back into his condo. Alison's interests were piqued and she just had to know his secret. 